what is about to go down. G'day guys, it's Dry here, and welcome to Seduce Me the Otome. This was suggested on a live stream I did not long ago. Um, but they just said, play this, it's free on Steam, so let's just play. This is a fictional interactive narrate to any character represent to real life people are purely coincident. <laughs> Got you. Also, please note that the following game is made for PG 16 audiences. So, this is your warning. For PG 16 audiences, please know that the sexual slash violent themes are explored in this game. Trigger warnings are abuse. Lyra and suicide, you have been warned. Why, hello. Please enjoy. My, aren't you a gorgeous sight? Can I be honored Great. enough to know your name? Is Ethan from Crane Gameplays here? What? Where? What? Is, is Wishu here? What? Me? Um. My name is Shara. Mm, a lovely name for a lovely person like you. Wonderful. Okay. Eric, do your job. Who's Eric? Very well. <clears throat> this game was produced by Seraphim Entertainment under the direction of Michaela Laws and is powered by Renpai Visual what? Novel Engine. We truly hope you'll enjoy this story. I know I'll enjoy it since you'll be in it. <laughs> Eric. This game gives me creepy vibes. Fine, fine. <laughs> Farewell, my sweet. <laughs> Farewell, my sweet. This game is getting creepy. Some... <laughs> okay, stand up with a bang. Come on, is that all you got? Wanna try the me, asshole? Let's retreat for now. Is shooting a deal? <laughs> no kidding. Let's or get out of here. That's right. You better run, you stupid punks. Stay out of our territory. Call it fate or call it coincidence. That one moment of violence started a chain of events I will this never formula, forget. This formula, created in the 70s, is one of the most important in the field of financial theory. Is it raining? It is used to calculate the price of European style options and is widely used by option marketers. Oh, it's typing. Though there are some discrepancies that are now corrected with the modern hmm. company. Hmm. Oh, it is rain. Ooh, that would be me though if I was in a game. Rain. It's been a long time since we've gotten rain around here. But it is the season for rainy weather, so it's not exactly that surprising. Personally, I love the sound of it. The way the raindrops fall. Like the soft tapping of fingers. It was soothing. Even looking at the droplets hit the glass of the window was strangely calming. I'm the exact same when it comes to rain. I love listening to it. I love watching all the water droplets fall when I'm hitting. It just oddly calms me down. And it's oddly something really just... Something really strange about it. It just makes me calm down and feel more relaxed. For this reason, I felt lucky for having a seat next to the window, though I did spend more time staring outside than I did paying attention in class. Nothing new there. The lecture in class was pretty boring. Miss Phillips' voice was... sophric, but I just wasn't interested in what she was saying. And since it was the period right before lunch, all I could think about was doing other things in my free time. Like eat and sleep and eat and watch YouTube. Honestly, I didn't really care much for economics. Sure, I had good grades in this class, but it was only because I had the textbooks and did my assignments as I had to. I was only taking this class because it was mandatory. If it were up to me, I could 
I would have probably taken another course. Luckily, it was my senior year. Same. So after this semester, it would mean the end of high school courses forever. Thank God for that. I didn't hate high school. It was just kind of a mundane, how the days drifted on and on, as if there was no end to it. The only thing I really enjoyed about going to school was meeting my friends, hanging out with them, but that was kind of it. In short, I was done with high school. The start of second semester brought a note of finally to it. I had already applied to many universities this semester prior and was expecting replies within the next few months. It seemed like the start of something new, something that would change. This is, that is, if things could change. I started, I stared at the faint outline of raindrops in the distance. For now, I was stuck in class. Miss Anderson. Mm hmm? Miss Philip raises her voice, interrupting my train of thought. She is very bright outside for it being so rainy. Just when I was thinking about class, I quickly turned my head to face the teacher, hoping she didn't pick me out just because she noticed I was spacing out. Um, Would you care yes, to name Madame. the equation I set up on the blackboard? Oh, I think I read about that in the textbook last night. It should be... The Black School is module for me. I'm a know it all. Anderson. It followed me wherever I went. Most people didn't really know me by my first name, but rather my surname. No doubt, since the surname was a trademark of the international and famous Philander Anderson family toys, and because the founder was my own grandfather. Suzu. One of my best friends turned around and proudly gave me a punch to the shoulder. Kick ass, girl. Kick ass, girl. From beside me, I heard Naomi, another one of my best friends, clearing her throat in obvious disapproval of Susie's <clears throat> choice of words. She means good job. Miss Capini. Okay. Oi. Care to tell me who the Oi. creators of this formula were? Uh, some guys named Black and Shoals. <clears throat> Fisher Black and Myron Shoals. Very good, Miss Patterson. There you go. Show off. Better study next time, Suzu. Be like us and study once in a while. Nah. Suzu rolled her eyes and slashed in her chair as Nomi gave her a small smirk. She always pouted That's when Nomi That's the end of today's her. lecture. Now, let's separate into groups and work on your projects. Remember, everything is due on Monday. Go ahead now. Thanks, teacher. Much appreciated. Before I knew it, Suzu and Naomi had scooted their desks to align with mine, and we turned into the three musketeers. Whenever the teacher let the students decide in the groups, we was grouped together in our little trio. It was a sheer stroke of luck that we all managed to be in the same class, so we had to so we had to at least take the opportunity to stick together as much as we could. Besides, we were the most comfortable around each other than, say, compared to being around with other classmates. It just made sense for us to put our heads together for any kind of project. I took out the poster we were working on and rolled it open onto the three desks. We were pretty much finished with fulfilling most of the guidelines for the project, though we did still have to add a few finishing touches here and there. After working on making the poster a bit prettier, we sat back and inspected our work to see what we still had to do. Naomi, as usual, was the first to look for any issues. She lightly tapped a pencil against her chin, staring intently right, at so the project. See. We finished the budgeting section, the building leasing, and the cost for labor. What else do we need? Susie straightened up to look at the poster and stroked her chin. After a few How seconds, she very surprised as she spoke. Huh? Did we really skip over that? Of course we did! You always go straight into the logical statistics and stuff that you completely True. skip over the facts. We point. need a name for our project. Ugh. A name is usually At helpful. At least we caught it this time. What do we name it? Hmm, not sure. What do you think? It always came down to me. Whenever there was something to be named or titled, I was a master of an ending decision. I like Trinity Corporation! Even where she wanted to be. That is way too predictable. How about the 
Dragon Company. What do dragons have to do with our project? What does Trinity have to do with this project? Sorry, the camera. Why? It's funny. a totally unpredictable name. It's hot. But our company sells bubble gum. Who said we okay. can't produce spicy bubble gum? <sighs> Touche. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Both of them looked at me expectingly, even though I wasn't quite sure myself. I didn't really want to choose sides. Choose sides. If I could speak English, that would be so much better. But if it were up to me, I would say. Trinity Corporation sounds just fine. I like Dragon Corporation. Mm, I think corporate Corporation is just sounding better, whereas Company seems smaller. Ah, fine. Be lame. All right. Now that we've decided on a name. Sorry. Now what? As we ended our name <laughs> game, a giggle scrambled my thoughts. Ignore huh? It. Who was that? I looked over my shoulder to see her laughing with her circle of friends, mostly comprised of the popular people that were practically friends with everyone in the school. And as a result, everyone in the school knew them. In the centre of it all was Lizette White. She sat with a posture that indicated she was still working, but that she also was ready to casually chat about her day. She had an endearing balance of charisma and awkward, which was really apparent when she first talked to someone. It was easy to make her smile and laugh, and she quite, and she's quite the comedian as well. Basically, she was perfect. Not that she was like a robot or something, but she was the student that everyone wanted to be. This end was bright, easygoing, and above all, had her future laid out right in front of her. Unlike the average student, she knew what she wanted to do after high school, and as a result, she was confident and ambitious, though sometimes it could rub a lot of people the wrong way. Moreover, I had known her ever since I was young, and it ultimately resulted in a rivalry that continues today. Of course, my friends knew what was between us upon seeing my glaze at her. She doesn't they shifted even their like attention to her. In my opinion. She probably is, but she's too much of a stuck-up priss to allow herself to look like she's actually doing work. Oh, come on, Suzu. True. She may be a little off-putting, but she's not the giant That's priss nice that you're making her seem to be. The day she isn't a priss is the day I turn into you. What's that supposed Ooh. to mean? Never mind. It's about time. Let's bail. All right, calm down. Unsurprisingly, Suzu was the first out of the classroom, sliding her backpack on her shoulder with ease as she quickly out to the, the door. Exit and she always manages to be the first one out of the door. I don't think I'll ever understand that. Yeah, I have a friend who does that, and I don't understand. Me and you both. She gave me a smile as if relieved by the fact that I felt the same way as she did. just be normal like the two of us? Because normal is overrated. Why be normal when you can be anything but? It's Very true. Think about <laughs> it. Man, you guys are slow. Are you coming or what? Oh, shut up. We heard you what? the first time. Not everyone has rocket boosters attached to their legs when the bell rings. Yeah, I'm really small. Give me Are you time. Kidding for me? More. That class was ridiculously boring. Even Miss Valedictorian here was dozing off a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to admit, I was spacing out. And just because I answer one question does not mean I'm automatically okay, the so valedictorian. Okay, so it wasn't too interesting. But it you should at boring. least pay attention when Phillips is talking about the important parts. And when's that? So you finally admit it. We're finally on the same wavelength. Welcome to the club, Patterson. Please, don't call me by my last name. This isn't the classroom. Never in a million years Truth. will we ever see things eye to eye. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> Despite this, they both burst out in laughter. Normally anyone would think that opposite like them wouldn't even associate with each other. But even though they were so different, their friendship somehow makes a lot of sense. Maybe they were just perfectly complimenting or personality just didn't dictate the possibility of their friendship. After all, we three have been best friends since All right, since so where preschool. are we heading to first? 
cafeteria. Whatever preschool is. I think we can all agree that we're really hungry, especially after hearing Preach, about our sister. company's line of deliciously spicy bubble gum. Who would even buy that? I wonder. Me? A lot of people be surprised. <laughs> you do like spicy food after all. Yo, this is a cafeteria? That looks damn cool. We enter the cafeteria, a bustling room filled with the aroma of different kinds of foods. As we got in line, we ordered our meals and chatted freely. Spicy chicken burger for me. That's my definition of a good meal. So, Susie likes hot food. You're probably going to need water or something to curb all that spicy flavor, Suzu. I can't be tamed by the likes of that. If it's spicy, sure. then it's got to be all or nothing. You're crazy. I prefer nothing. Oh, yeah, I'm crazy. I think I'm getting a migraine. Calm down. I think I'll go with mac and cheese. Just mac and cheese and soda, even though I don't really drink sodas, so I'll just say lemonade. That sounds good. We don't even have sodas here anyway. We have, well, we call them. We just call them like fizzy drinks. Yeah. Once we got our food, we settled down at one of the empty tables, putting our backpacks aside to finally dig into the food. Suzu leans back in her chair, tilting it back so that All she right could rest then. her feet on Is the table by the food. Is there anything we want to talk about? <laughs> yeah. Bored already? I know. Let's talk about... Say boys and I will never speak to you ever again. Yeah, please Aww, let's talk to about boys. Why not? What's so interesting that's about, all you ever talk about guys? Not like any of us are going to get boyfriends anytime soon. We don't know that. What if one of Oops. us does get a boyfriend? Like that's going to happen, Naomi. Look at us. Yeah, come on. I'm now. a tiny Italian. You're a ditzy blonde. Hey! No offense. It's true. And Anderson here. Well, I guess she could land a boyfriend or girlfriend if she wants. Or girlfriend? She can be a lesbian if she wants. True. Exactly. I could be bi if I want. That's okay, Suzu. Why I don't not? want a boyfriend yet. It's her senior year. Might as well get a boyfriend. Maybe she's just not interested True. in a relationship, Suzu. Well, it really wasn't about wanting a relationship, but more of there was no one interesting enough to be in a relationship with. Don't get me wrong, I'm an open person, but there were not many interesting guys in the school to go out with. Who knows? Time will tell. Yeah. Naomi looked at me, wanting to continue the conversation. However, before she could speak, the speaker in the cafeteria started up and now it's going to echo through the cafeteria. Please come to the main office immediately. Please bring your things with you. Oh my. Looks like our plans have been cut short. The men in white coats have finally come to get you. <laughs> Suzu, don't joke what? around. What if it's serious? Ah, fine. It's probably not. If something happens, just call us. Thanks, guys. Funnily enough, something did happen. And it was certainly no laughing matter. Cold. It was really cold. The opposite to how it is in this room because it is actually spoiling hot outside and in this home. And we have no aircon. The rain became heavier that afternoon, accompanied by rolling thunder. Now and then, the skies had turned black, though I couldn't see any of it under my black umbrella. Not that I was looking up, in fact. Looking up was the exact opposite I wanted to do. I stared at the grass beneath my feet, unable to look at the people weeping around me. Who died? All I could see was the damp grass underneath my feet. Only the monotone eulogies that floated through my ears reminded me that I was at a funeral. It was only when the speech ended that I finally was able to raise my head. Oh, my father died. A small gathering of people. Mostly made of relatives that I didn't even know were related to me were huddled around a simple small grave. I looked beside me where my father was standing and holding up a large black umbrella for our small family of three. Oh, so it's the grandfather. His face was emotionless, a strange sight next to my weeping mother. I wondered what was going through his mind. After all, etched into the smooth grain stone before us was his father's name. My grandfather, the one who raised me like his own daughter, had passed away that day. The ceremony was small, only close family were allowed to come. Slowly through 
Slowly, though, people began to leave, leaving my father, my mother, and me behind at the grave. A man dressed in a clean black suit under the uniform black umbrella of the funeral attendees walked towards us, introducing himself as grandfather's lawyer. He pulled out a few documents from his suitcase and, and began to read a I shall read Harold Anderson's last will and testament. Only my parents and I were allowed to be present around grandfather's will. It was under the strict request of his lawyer. And to my dearest to granddaughter, I give my estate. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house shall also be given to my granddaughter. What? What? I couldn't believe my ears. I'd earned my family's estate at 18? That was impossible, and yet it was really my own father's hand. He passed the family estate to her? Why am I not surprised? Dear. Well, did he say anything about what will become of the CEO and chairman position of the Anderson Toys Company? No. It is presumed that the vice chairman will succeed the position. <laughs> no. Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. What a stubborn old man. What did you want to do with it, father? Shaking his head, my father turned to my mother About with a serious estate. expression on his face. Should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Ask Honey, what do you think? I, I might have an opinion. I really wasn't sure what to say. Why did my grandfather think I was the appropriate heir to the mansion? Was I even Well, ready that to live seems on my to own? be it. We'll be taking our leave now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some time to adjust. David! Yeah, jeez. Even though she raised her voice, my dad's words began walking back to the car. Don't mind him, honey. Disinterested. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we no get kidding. back home for now? You can go on ahead to the car, Mom. I think I need some time alone with Grandpa. You can tell us it's American because they wrote Mom and we say Mom, oh, which is course. N Take all the time you need. Thanks, Mom. She gave me a quick hug and hurried to my father. I looked around the funeral grounds, which was completely empty, save for the sun looking grey that was laid in front of me. I'm sure that if Grandpa were here in charge of arranging on this, it would have been much different. It was plainly obvious that my father was in charge of the whole event. Who else would have buried their own family the same day they passed away? Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, and yet the grave was a mere stone slab of the ground. Void of any children's toys. My dad needn't bother to put down flowers. His disdain for my grandfather was almost pitiful. Sorry, Grandpa. I tried to force out some words, but anything that came out was choked sob. <laughs> you told me to stay strong. But right now, I am the farthest from it. At that one time, Long ago. Oh, Grandpa. So good to see you again, sweetie. I was swept into a giant bear hug, and we both laughed as he spun me around like an aeroplane. It was one of my favorite things about seeing my grandfather, the way he grew, greeted me. Unlike my father, my grandfather was loving and painful, even as I grew older. Painful, even as I grew older. Sorry that Daddy couldn't be here today. He said he wasn't feeling too good again. It had always been like that. Dad missed every visit to Grandpa's house, citing that he was busy with work and wasn't so? feeling well. Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time. And you're here, right? Mm, yeah. So what are we doing today, Grandpa? Mommy said that there are a new dessert cafe oh, open I in town. To, Maybe we could go? But I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, it is. Is it a toy? I was designing a new line of them, but I feel like something's missing. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Yeah. Of course. He placed the toy in my hand with a small, a smile, and inspected it carefully. It was beautifully crafted, and obviously a lot of so, work to put it. So, what do you one think? Thing, though. 
Hmm. I think the heart on its chest should light up when you hug it. Like it'd be, it would be like it's alive, and then it could be like nightlight before you go to sleep. He stroked his chin, considering my input while nodding his head. After a few moments of silence, the ray. That's a great idea. I'll get to changing it right away. You're He's making a care bear. Little lucky charm, dear. You I had know what time to make the perfect toy. You used to have a care bear, and it was a giant teddy bear, and the, the stomach would glow if you put up against a light for a long period of time, and then you turn the lights off, and the stomach would glow. <laughs> well, I hope I can you be like you one day, Grandpa. Well? Mm, well, making people happy is the best feeling in the world. I don't know if I want to make toys when I grow up, though. That's true. My only wish in life is to, when I grow up, when I'm older, is to make people happy. I don't care what my job is. If I'm making someone happy, then I've achieved my life don't goal. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. That makes sense. Daddy doesn't think it's Your the father. same way, though. I'm sure he just wants the best for you. Well, I'm sweetie, not so sure about that. He bent down to look at me eye level as with a serious look on his face. Say something that doesn't make sense now. You must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. I feel like sometimes m males I've noticed are either two ways. They either show their affection a lot or they don't show their affection at all. I don't hate daddy. I really do love him. I just don't know why he's like this though. difficulties with each other in the past. But it's nothing that you should be concerned about. I heard tidbits of this from my mother, my mother, and a variety of people. Many people had stayed quiet when my father and grandfather, both of them, refrained from saying a word on the subject matter. But it was clear that whatever happened set up a wall between them. It's hard, though, trying to However, pretend as if nothing was wrong. No matter what, you have to stay strong. Sorry, my life's in store. You're a big girl already, and well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. It's true. You know, there will come a time when you feel like the entire world is just against you and you're struggling to breathe and to fight it and to go through this fight against the against everything. But you know you've got friends and family who will support you no matter what. You've got people who you can trust and even if you don't have someone, you know you've got not only yourself to trust, but even the community here or other communities on YouTube, people need to have trust in each other and if you ever need to, you've got trust in me. If you've got no one else to trust, trust Daddy, in me. Daddy, Mommy, your friends at school, me, we'll stand together to get through it. How can you be because so sure Because we'll be right that? here and here. He pointed his finger to my head first so and stay then pointed strong. at my chest. Promise? For a moment he looked almost sad, pleading, but as quickly as it had come, the expression disappeared from his face, and he was all smiles once again. Promise. On hearing that, oh, Grandpa right, let out a burst of laughter. Enough of that. that. How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? I know it can't come from that new cafe, but we sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Homemade hey, dessert? Slow down there. To the kitchen. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> you will be the very home I love to see you in. Why? Why would you think I'd be ready to take it, especially after this? Such an anger bubbled within me, but I quickly swallowed it. There was no use in getting mad, especially when the person in question was no longer there. I'm sorry, I have... It's hard to stay calm when you left me so many questions, especially about what happened between you and Dad. What am I doing? Walking to a grave. My vision blurred and I suddenly realized I was crying. My face heated up as tears rolled down my cheek. I'll bring you some flowers later. I, I miss you, Grandpa. I'll try my best to fulfill my promise I gave you, even if the world might be turned against me. I left a grave wiping my tears hastily. Well, so it's time to head back home. I'll cook up your favorite lasagna when we get home, okay? 
And with that, I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below and tell me what you think is going to happen. Because who knows? Anyway, dry out. See you guys in the next video. Sorry, Cass and And let's bring it in for a race. Cass at home. Bye-bye. See ya. This backstory, though. Yes.